Welcome to BMI Redefined with Jen and Mo. All right, let's do this. <laughs> so we are so excited to be here today talking about perspectives and perceptions in the world around us, particularly in the school world. We have a very famous and wonderful guest with us and Mo will introduce him. <laughs> and our wonderful famous guest is a really good old dear friend of mine. He's not old, but he's an old friend. Yeah, and, his old, name, yeah. Really, yeah. and his name is John Wenstrom. And John is now the principal, I cannot believe it, but you are the principal of Buchanan Elementary School in Livonia. Is that correct? Livonia, yeah, Michigan. Livonia, Michigan. Okay. Yeah. And it is, I, I'm just so thrilled that you're able to do this and take the time out because I know during this time period, it's probably a busy time. You're trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to negotiate and how to figure out how to lead your team through this time period. So um, thank you for joining us. And I just want to say that John and I met actually in a little town in Northern Michigan called Cadillac, Michigan, which is where I'm from. And John, you're from Scottville, correct? Scottville and Ludington in Scott Michigan. Scottville yep. and Ludington, yep. that's right. That's right, Scottville. I knew Ludington, but I wasn't quite sure it was Scottsville or Scott, okay. Excellent. So you are, you hail from there. So we hail from, you know, small towns and right. we met in Cadillac, Michigan. Uh, where we taught at Franklin Elementary School. Yep. And wasn't like one of our principals, like Jill Ashworth, right? And yep. who were some other of our principals? Oh, gosh. When we George, were was, George was before uh, yeah, George Jill. George Rosanna, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we so we have a couple of, we, we, we shared. No, way, back, of, way back, way back. <laughs> way back. Way <laughs> back. So cool. That's right. But we've both done a lot between that time, and you were also an administrator at a college, and now you're principal, and I'm just so proud of you, and I'm so glad that you can join us today. Well, so, I Jin, appreciate you yes. inviting me. <laughs> good. Yay, good. Uh, Jen, do you want to go ahead and ask the first question? Yes, I would oh, love good. to. So, John, we're just kind of wondering about what a typical day for you looks like. So pre-pandemic and currently, how is that different? Well, one of the things I love about my job is every day is something new. Uh, it's always an adventure. You never really know what to expect. Uh, you make your to-do list and then walk into the building and then uh, anything goes. Um, on a typical day, I try to connect with students. I try to meet with teachers families, um, playing with colleagues. Um, and in some ways, uh, pre and post pandemic, uh, things are the same. Uh, every day is something new. Now, um, we never know what's going to happen. Things have been changing week by week. Um, but still trying to connect with students, um, meet with teachers and, and families and my colleagues across the state and in the district. We're just doing it online now. So a lot of the same uh, jobs that we're doing, it's just all taken a different format, so. And do most of your students have access to, you know, the World Wide Web? Do they have access to internet? Do they have iPads or Chromebooks or something at home that they can utilize and use? We're very fortunate um, in our district um, that many of our families do have the technology to stay connected. Uh, that being said, I've also given out um, hundreds of uh, devices, Chromebooks, for parents to be able to pick up. Our district has given away over thousands of mm -hmm. uh, computers for students to take home and connect. Um, and for those folks who aren't able to do that, uh, we're providing pencil paper options. So we're really trying to make sure that in some way, shape, or form, our students are connected and able to access uh, the instruction. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. So you mentioned that you've coordinated with other leaders in the school system. So you are in communication with other school districts looking for different processes and, and improvements and all that. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm serving right now as the president elect of the Michigan Elementary and Middle Schools Principals Association. Um, and one of the benefits of that is it's helped me stay in contact with um, people across the state, you know, talking from principals. We have a lot of uh, principals in our own district uh, that we are able to connect with virtually. Um, and what I'm hearing across the state, um, and to be honest, even beyond uh, through um, social media uh, principals I've connected with, of 
hearing a lot of the same emotions. You know, people are, are, are concerned, they're worried. Your principals are focused on how do we keep kids connected even though we can't be in, inside the buildings? How do we still support teachers um, and, and, and help them as they're developing lessons and switching to uh, an online or distance learning format? So what I've heard across the state and across the, the country from principals I've talked with is a lot of those same emotions, a lot of those same questions, how do we support, how do we connect, um, whether it's small or large districts, urban or rural, it's hitting folks in a lot of the same ways. Um, but I've also heard a lot of uh, support, a lot of positivity, a lot of we can do this and, and still collaborate and, and make it through. Uh, so it's been overall, I would say, a positive tone that I've heard. Excellent, excellent, good, good. And um, you know, the how are you? Uh, how are you keeping? You you mentioned before you're keeping the morale boosted, and you're you know trying to maintain that engagement of the kids. I am wondering. We've spoken to middle school and high school teachers, and. I, I just as an elementary teacher myself in my vast, you know, <laughs> age of teaching uh, pre-K through college, um, how do you keep those elementary students engaged? How do you, because it's a different animal. It is. It is a different animal. It is not where, I mean, we have a, we have a middle school and a high schooler in our home and they are on their Zoom, Google Hangouts, they're doing their thing, and Jen, you the same. You're yeah, college students in high school here, they just go do that. What they go what do, do their doing? thing. I've got a class, I'm headed upstairs, you know, and right. it's just, they go do their thing, and I don't have to be, you know, right there. Watching over with them. elementary, you probably do, right? And, right, and, and the parents, I mean, I, the parents must have a, a more of a burden, mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean a burden, but they, they have more of a responsibility, responsibility, yeah. responsibility. to, it, yeah, it certainly has been a challenge um, because you're right for elementary age students, um, in addition to the students getting on, for the most part, those parents are as well too. So if a child has a classroom Zoom meeting, uh, the parents right there too. So um, it is a lot um, for, it takes a lot of effort, and a lot of time for those families. Some of the ways that we've been really trying to you know, connect with our, our students um, and we have kindergarten through, I have 500 uh, kindergarten through fourth graders um, here at our school. What we're doing is at least once a week, um, sometimes several times, each classroom teacher is uh, conducting a Google Meet or a Zoom with their classroom just so they can see each other, smiling faces, touch base with each other, say hi. Um, I've seen teachers doing, continuing with their student of the week program where Students can uh, share out a video as they're telling all about uh, their, uh, what they're doing, their pets, um, their likes and interests. Um, and I love that. Um, some of the ways I've been trying to keep uh, families connected, I've been doing a nightly story time of reading a story each evening. Uh, but I'll be honest, that's not unique. Uh, nearly all of my teachers are doing something like that. So um, they can get it from their classroom teacher, they can get it school-wide from uh, my videos, um, something we had been doing uh, for years, we start every single uh, week with a, we call it Celebrate Monday Assembly. Um, and I actually borrowed that uh, idea from a friend of mine, Sean Gaylord, who years ago put out a hashtag of saying, hey, let's flip the narrative and make Mondays the best day of the week instead of Fridays. And so I always loved that idea. And so what we did in our school is we turned that into a morning assembly. Well, students look forward to that. They expected it. I'll be honest, even parents did. Um, it was a, a feature of our school. So when all of this happened, we decided to turn that into a virtual format and continue with our Celebrate Monday assemblies, uh, <laughs> now virtual. Um, but we start off the week on a positive note. We talk about our theme, uh, our, uh, uh, a character trait. Um, I do some horrible dance moves. So we, we have a good time with it, but it's just another way of trying to keep families connected uh, and in tune. But um, it's been amazing, the work that I've seen uh, educators across the state. And to be honest, I'm going to give a shout out to my teachers 
at Buchanan and uh, in our district of Livonia that um, they've done an exceptional job of connecting with families. Well, and I was going to just uh, go, out, go with that a little bit. Do you feel that you, I mean, do you see a different side of your teachers now? Do you see a different side of your team and them pulling together in a different light? Absolutely. In fact, I, I, I kind of look at this of every week, I feel like we're, we are inventing a new way forward. Um, when all of this happened, we were, how can we collaborate and plan together um, virtually? Um, we hadn't done that before. How can we make sure that families are getting what they need? Uh, in, in just a matter of days, our district uh, put together uh, food distribution sites across the city so families could come in and pick up food, uh, so they can pick up devices if necessary to stay connected. Um, teachers moving to an online platform and determining how they can best uh, do lessons. I've had teachers in the last weeks learn how to use um, technology forms that I hadn't even heard of uh, a few weeks before that. And I, I consider myself fairly tech savvy, um, <laughs> but the amount of new knowledge and new learning that's happened just within um, our educators in our building, in our district, uh, and across the country has been amazing. And to me, that's the true spirit of education, of we're, we're walking the walk and talking the talk, of we're learning as we go too, as we ask families and students to learn uh, as well. Great. Great. So I did see one of your morning assembly videos. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. I want to be your student. <laughs> yeah, yes, very, very engaging. So, you, you know, being part of a school district on a team or being part of any organization, you always have like the CRT, the crisis response teams and all of the planning that happens just in case something like this happens. Um, what, what have you seen as far as the planning and the manuals and the processes and procedures and all that? gearing up for something like a pandemic or some type of crisis being employed during this time or is it all new kind of processes you're having to come up with or is it a combination i, I gotta be honest I, I felt if you would have asked me a month ago i would have said we had pretty good crisis response uh for pretty much anything that comes. nobody expected this so I, I felt that in many ways we were and still are we are writing the, the manual right now as we move forward mm -hmm. of how do we move uh, again from face to face to to distance learning how do teachers collaborate and plan um, how do we meet as district teams um, all while trying to you know be responsible keep socially distant um, it's it has been a challenge um, but it also has shown me that um, when people come together and collaborate, we can do anything. So I feel like we wrote, we are writing the book right now on crisis response for pandemic. Um, and we will look back on this time as uh, things that we've developed uh, that we can use in the future uh, for distance learning if we need to, and also uh, showing how quickly we can collaborate. I'm gonna go back to um, you know what I had said earlier, um, within, within one week, we had put together teams of how to uh, distribute food. I mean, simple things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not simple, but uh, meeting those basic needs of families first. So how do we organize uh, food drives? How do we organize uh, technology pickup? How do we coordinate um, lessons for students and make sure that uh, they're able to access that? Um, we, we put together a crisis, our district put together a crisis uh, hotline for students or families that were struggling. This all happened within a, a week's time that, of things that just didn't exist the week before. So to me, that's the true uh, you know, uh, victories that have come out of that. Mm -hmm. How do you see fall hmm. with the students coming in? Because what I, what I fear is, is, I mean, and my brother is also a teacher, right. is that, you know, he's, you know, we're all, he and I, we're all in this age where this is, where it's kind of hitting, you know, us. And you have like 30 kids coming into one classroom and, and I don't know how many kids you have, you know, uh, per, per teacher, but 
um, we have, you know, be, say between 25 and 30 or whatever. Mm -hmm. You have all of these kids coming in from all these different places. I mean, you know, they could be carrying it or whatever. I mean, how do you protect? How, how, how is anyone going to be protected in the classroom? Yeah. And, and, and those are, the, yeah, you know? those are big questions that loom over of, uh, you know, now what? And, and how do we move forward? So one thing uh, I had just heard the term the other day, and I've been using it every every so often. Of you know, we're trying to do one impossible thing at a time that right now, and and that's one way of just kind of keeping you know our feet in front of us and working through step by step. And I think it's helped because I hate saying this, but looking too far out can cause even more anxiety of saying, all right, how are we going to get through this current school year? How are we going to get through this current week, week by week with lesson planning. Um, having said that, looking forward, I think a couple things are going to change. Um, one thing I think, again, looking at trying to look for silver linings here, mm -hmm. I think the appreciation for what uh, teachers do every day um, will, will grow tremendously. I, I feel that I've already seen that. I've talked with a lot of parents who have uh, emailed me, sent me messages and said, Gosh, we we so we've always appreciated our teachers, but we really appreciate them now of what they're doing uh, uh, every day in the classroom and also now continuing online. Mm -hmm. I I think um, our 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 lens will will change in the fall. So I think some of the things that we've done in the past will will look differently. We're we're also 25, 30 kids in a in a classroom. I think things like and I hate saying this, but maybe my celebrate Monday assemblies where I'm cramming 500 kids into the gym every Monday morning, that might look different. You mm -hmm. know, maybe we look at uh, doing some video uh, feeds into our classroom. Um, you know, lunchtime may look different. Maybe we're looking at smaller lunch groupings uh, instead of two large groups of 250 kids. We might break that up into grade levels. Um, who knows? It might even be uh, lunch in the classroom. I, I think we're going to move on. Uh, education will continue. Kids will still be in our building. Face-to-face um, -face instruction will continue, but I think it might look a little different. I think we're going to be more cautious, um, smarter. Um, I definitely think um, of making sure we're monitoring who's sick and who's healthy, and this old mentality of come on in and push through it even if you're not feeling well. I think that's gone out the window. I think we need to be smart and take care of ourselves and others by staying home when when we're ill. And so I think we'll we'll still move ahead, but we'll we'll do it in a, a smarter way. Good. Good. So I have a question. So what kind of thoughts or advice would you like to share with these? parents who are like we talked about earlier are trying to help lead their students through these online classroom experiences when I, I, I was talking the other day to a mom's group online we had a zoom meeting and just listening to the moms talk about you know particularly elementary ages just having to be right there and trying to understand the new math and what have you you know it's just it's right been or or, or in high school physics and that kind of thing, like, oh man, my brain cells. You know? <laughs> so what kind, of, what kind of thoughts do you have to share with parents? Um, the two words I, I keep using with everyone is show patience and grace. Um, patience and grace with your child. They're doing the best they can. A lot of kids are scared right now, especially our younger students. Um, patience and grace with the classroom teachers as they, again, invent this and they're moving forward as best they can and patience and grace with themselves. Um, parents are doing a lot right now. They're working from home. They're also trying to monitor uh, and help with their child's homework um, and, and online learning. Uh, they may be struggling financially right now. I feel like we're all struggling with some of the emotional issues that comes with, with being um, isolated. And so I, I always tell people, you know, remember those things, show patience and show grace, but remember yourself too. We are all doing the best we can, um, and I feel like people need to um, take it easy on themselves. Also, um, you know, my personal view, and a lot of educators I, I, I talk with, less is more. Um, it's not about 
keeping uh, kids busy from uh, eight until three every day. It's uh, uh, this distance education and uh, learning is about um, keeping uh, curiosity going, you know, practicing those skills, um, you know, asking questions, staying connected with their teachers, with their peers as best they can through an online setting. Um, but it's not about staying busy uh, with, with busy work. It's about keeping our brains active, um, practicing, I always say readings uh, and journaling are great things that everybody can be doing throughout this time. And something they may look back to years later and say, wow, uh, you know, what a time you know, that we lived through. So uh, I personally feel less is more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, 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 yeah. So what, um, that was excellent. I'm just, I'm just processing all that right now. That is amazing. Less is more. I like that. So are there any just final thoughts or comments that you'd like to leave with our, our viewers and listeners about all of us being involved with this pandemic situation right now and any thoughts on how we work through it and come out on the other side? Well, I, I think that's uh, hit it right on the head of saying we're going to work through it. We're going to get through this. Um, and I think it's something important for folks to remind uh, each other. I feel like this has taught us, at least I can say from uh, my building perspective and other educators that I've talked with is, I'm, I marvel at the way that people have stepped up, the way that they have created uh, things that didn't exist before and found ways to um, keep doing what we've always done of you know, supporting students, uh, teaching the best we can in whatever environment we're, we're allowed. And I think it's shown us that we can handle whatever's thrown at us um, as long as we stick together um, and work, work as a team. So, right. Yeah. And, and it also helps that they have a great person leader in you. Yes. It makes me tear yes. up because I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Yes. You're doing well, a great job. John. I would want to, I mean, I, I loved working with you and I can just imagine you leading all these people and I they're very fortunate well I I appreciate what you guys are doing too because what you're doing right now is what I've been trying to do is keep people connected in any way shape or form and, and you're doing that as well too so thank you to both of you thank you well we appreciate you sharing some time with us today John thank you so much thank you both and now it is time for me to go get my second cup of coffee. I them. <laughs> and thank you it's everyone great. for joining us for another segment of BMI Redefined with Jen and Mo. And we look forward to seeing you next time again, John, thank you for being an awesome guest. Mm, and we Johnny. Will, yes, we will see you soon. Take care. Thank you Bye. both. Bye-bye.